Okay, things that I have learned. So this is about day four of Scrap Mechanic. And we've recorded two episodes already. And we want to talk about stuff that we've discovered, okay? Um, which kind of means talking a little bit about gyroscopes. But I wanted to show you another couple of things um, really quickly. Uh, okay. So let's just slap a little down a second. Ha have you ever had this problem? You know, you're you're sitting on something, and you find that the thrust of a jet just a bit too abrupt. Yes. Okay. I've lost my jet engine. There's my jet engine. Okay. This is basically how to soften that on-offness. Okay. So this is this is the most primitive um, uh, rocket in the world. Okay, so you'd build something that looks a bit like that. Uh, I, I'm sensing your roots in in goblin engineering here. I, I hate to point this out to you. <laughs> uh, are you not the man with the exploding rocket boots? I, I am indeed the man with the exploding rocket boots. Basically, the man cow with the exploding rocket Instead of doing that, boots. if you do something like this, and I'm just trying to get the same distance out, but grab one of these shock absorbers or a pair of shock absorbers like that and mm -hmm. stick your engine on the shock absorbers okay oh. right and what it does is immediately it oh that's too far in it immediately when when the when it turns on it will the, just the shock take. absorber cushions yeah simple huh that's really nice. What sort of suspension resistance would you be looking at? Well, you... I, you mess around, so it all depends on how harsh you have that thruster on as well. So, like, like, so if you look at this, this is part of the gyroscope engine. They're all mounted on shock absorbers. These are actually mounted really low. These are really low thrust levels. But putting and actually two shock absorbers. Yeah. Remember, if you put two shock absorbers in, there's twice as much resistance if, as if you just had one. So I've done two for aesthetics, but really have, these have are all you separate. tested this? Is it additive? Have have they actually advanced the physics that much? You know what? That sounds like we need to do a physics testing episode. Oh god, um, physics testing yeah, episode. Th there are some weird things about physics in this game. So, uh, very very quickly, we discovered last episode. You pointed out to me, and I was incredulous that if you were to do, I didn't mean to do that. Um, this. Oh, was that that my misunderstanding of wheel bearings? No, not 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 missing same wheel bearings, but this is a weird physics thing, and I've just done this horribly wrong because it's now spinning. Right, um, I'm just going to delete that because that was a horrible mistake on my part. Right. <laughs> right. Quite obviously, okay. If I jump on this, and amazingly it's balanced, I go to one end. Yeah. Like. You obviously have no mass whatsoever, and yet no. you fall back to earth. So we can only okay. imagine that you must have very, very, very little mass. Right. To accelerate okay. downwards at ten meters a second squared. That's weird, right? So that, um, that's what's weird is the, the physics engine for you is slightly different yeah. to the physics engine for anything you might now fire. You might also want to check where I've been messing with your. Uh... Yeah, yes, Rust is off centre. Sorry, I tried to warn you. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that I've been messing with your inventions the way you mess with mine. Oh, right, I would never. And you know what? It's a, it's a ten, ten, ten. Like, it just really softens out. <laughs> I can't help but feel that might have been easier if you greased the bottom of your box of cucumbers. Uh... <laughs> Um, but you see what I mean, okay? So that simple trick allows you to get better, more even thrust than that very sudden jerking on-off motion that we that that we've both been having, okay? What what with the, the mattress that flew and everything? Um... <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. Um, I don't know what's going on there with my. Uh... Uh... Oh, I know what I hit that with one of these things, okay? So invention number two is the gyroscope. <laughs> okay. And we've 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 I've shown this on as a gif on thingy about this and this invention here isn't as good as my original invention I, um, so I saw this there's a guy online who invented the idea 
I'm not even here. Let me just, let me just grab my original one because my original one's actually better. Called gyro bike. Hey. Right now, let me jump on a moment and turn on the gyroscope a second. So let's sit there. Basically, what has to happen is the top and the bottom have to spin in opposite directions. Okay? Yes. And then okay. there, that they have stability. Now these sensors, there's two over here, mm -hmm. and you can see that the bar is basically maintaining its horizontalness, even though the entire rig is horrendously unstable. Yes. Okay? And then again, these are on thrusters. Or, or these thrusters are on um, suspensions, and you haven't really calibrated these. They just plopped them down. They're all set to three. And then these are set quite gentle because if you put it too aggressive, it throws itself down, and then these ones fire, and you start rocketing from side to side. The other thing you've got to be really careful of is the settings of these sensors are set to they're set to ten, but really it should only be set to about three because they only want to detect just this corner. They don't want to detect right. the spinning so, wheels. Yeah. And it, so so get... if I jump up onto the frame, I will throw the. I will throw the thrusters out and the whole bike will tip over. Well, you won't because you don't have any mass, remember. But if I put this here, right? Right? Then it sort of goes a bit wrong. And now what's happened is yeah. the sensors don't really... But the sensors are detect... Because the sensors set so far out, the sensors are detecting the, the spinning rather than... First right down to three and the yeah. stop misfire. But also, I haven't built this big enough. And this is the problem with the gyros. So, I, if I were to go down the shop and buy a gyroscope, it would be a, a, a half centimeter, half centimeter at most. You know, these chips yeah. are tiny. Um, yeah. And that's the problem here: is that that in scrap mechanic, you have to build something that's completely oversized, and yet logic gates aren't. So, I think what would be really interesting is it, for mods wise, is someone building a gyroscope chip which has an output but notice it can do sideways and it can do forwards and backwards as well so one of the things yeah. you can do is if you, you need it to be roughly balanced anyway and this isn't because uh, if you notice I put two engines down one to control the speed and one to control the gyros but just so it balances even if I'm not necessarily using the second engine yet uh, you want to put a balancing act down but this seat here is a bit of a um, I'd be better off putting a that on to help it balance a bit better and now it's more evenly weighted it's got a much better chance yeah okay do you see what I mean so right. balancing to begin with is, is kind of important but as we start steering now if we start to set off on a little journey it begins to right itself wow okay yeah right so if this was a more stable car with four wheels rather than just to be a motorbike with two it would be it just enough to give it a bit more stability sort of thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. And again, if you're making a flying vehicle, instead of you pushing down on both sides, you'd put four jets in, two pointing upwards, two pointing downwards. And then here, if you see that this, it's really weird, if it's low on this side, it basically wants to be, it means that this has gone up. So you'd put two facing down and you press down with two and you press up with the other two. So you would, if you're making a, a helicopter version, and then you put your normal jets on, controlled by your steering buttons, and have this balance you. So you want it just heavy enough to balance it. And if you start putting more weight on, building more out, you have to make the jet stronger because obviously you've got more mass and momentum. Which is where this one comes in. And this one does another thing. And this is another trick I found. I don't know if I found it sort online. Let's say you wanted to have a cool angled system. Okay, and again, yeah. I could be doing this slightly wrong um, because it always seems to reset for me, okay? So I think it's that one. Yeah. That's how this vehicle's supposed to look. It's um. not supposed to go up and down all the time. It's just that's how it's supposed to look. I wanted it to have quite a low sense of gravity. And I wanted to have this kind of V-shape because it, and also you can angle these wheels out. And the way you do that is really easy. You grab a block... I'm going to grab that thing, I'm going to grab a bearing. So anything I want to build at an angle, mm -hmm. uh, I also need a control block. Where's my control block gone? Here we go. I'm going to pull on a switch as well. Okay, I've got everything I need. Um, you put a bearing on. Okay. Put that on there. Control block sticking out. Right, 
And let's say I wanted these these to be at a slightly off angle. Oh, no, not that. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you could you build it three or you'd mask like like at the back here I put it in the middle so it looks it it, it sort of looks right so it's sort of in the, in there I put it between two blocks so you don't don't see the fact done this. You just drop your control block anywhere else on the, on the thing. And if you notice on here, there's actually two control blocks. I'm only yes. using one, but the other one's there just to counterbalance. I didn't want that. You could put down, I think it's two medium blocks would weigh the same as one control box. So you put this control block down and you wire it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, arguably, if you had to, I wanted all these to match. So I, I wanted to straighten up the other end. So if I do the same here, I'm going to put another one of these in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not doing this very nicely, but so I want this this post I'm putting on now. I want it to be parallel with the first post, okay? So what you can do is you just edit this control block and set it to being I'm going to set it to 45 degrees, yeah, and number two to 45 degrees. It does that, yeah. but notice that one's now completely wrong. I just reverse it. Yeah. And it's perfect, it's perfect as it is. And so that's how we get these diagonals and, and, and we can do the monorail stuff and, and it, it, that's that's the trick. And you just hide these. So when you're building logic out, this looks really, really a jumbled mess. Mm. I built all my logic out sort of on the ground with it spaced out so I could see what the hell was going on. And I literally went, went here and then went over here and built the thing and very slowly built it up. So this really isn't that complicated. There's a gyroscope system here, which is, there's no logic on it. All I've done with this gyroscope, just so, if I haven't done it here, it's literally powered, there's a button here to turn, it off, turn the spinner off. Um, and the same on this one, there's no other, oh I did, I put them through a, a, an OR gate, just so I can, um, uh, what I wanted to do here was I wanted two triggers. So if it tips over too far, it struggles. Whereas this vehicle now, if it tips over a little bit, um, yeah, it still continues to sink. Now this gyroscope again, I built it a bit too big. I'm built quite right. It's not quite stable. And apparently, apparently, it's to do with friction on two blocks. And someone's just ringing us. Um, so the other one is to know about logic gates. Okay. is you don't need um, fancy so I learnt logic a bit weird I learnt logic a bit weird me <laughs> so I like to get like a, a, a plank out or something let's put a bit a couple high so we don't get like grass showing ok when I learnt logic when I was a lad you could do things like flip flops ok and I'll show you how to do it and it's giving me a bit of grief so this is going to be a sequence, so it's going to flash, am I right? No. Okay. No, no, no. Nothing that, nothing that. Um, um, and, and this is what I was saying the other day, I said to you one night, what we really want is a... Um, what you would do normally, and it's, you're not going to see this, but you would plug that into that, and then you plug that into that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I've got my able to do it now. I think they're going to be and gates. Actually. And then what you would do is you'd plug the output of that into there, and output that sort of into there, but it then breaks. Yeah. Okay. So what you actually end up doing is using a not gate. When you do um um. You can do a couple of things which are almost transistor-like. When mm. you do trans uh, silicon transistors, you do everything with not, nots and nands, or nors. So a not gate, if you don't have a not gate, which you don't have one, you can just use a nor with okay. one input. Okay, so very basically, uh, a nor gate is like that. So it's currently lit up, and I press this button, it goes out. Yeah. So it's basically now a not gate. What you can do is you can use OR gates as buffers. So if you need to buffer, and the tick, this is where um, electronic simulation goes a bit weird. Right. Okay, we're back. So, um, so, so you, you say it breaks horribly. Yeah. Why does it not work the way somebody okay. with a, a so quote when degree you have in engineering? Uh, when you have real world, we don't base real world on ticks. 
you, so now and now aren't four ticks apart. We don't move jumpily in seconds. No, we're analog, you know. It time flows now into now into now. So when you have a silicon transistor, it's not on or off. When you get to the real nutty gritty, when you do, when you when you're learning about Kernoff maps and digital electronics, it's very easy to understand because it's on or off. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes sense. When you do what I did and take it too far and do your stupid courses, you realise that they don't. And in fact, if you talk to a power engineer, they don't. They're, they're, they're variants of voltages. And if you talk to a musician, they're not on and off. So you use transistors to amplify. So you use the fact that they're not perfect. And when you do real detailed silicon electronics, because there's no such thing as digital electronics whatsoever. It's all a big lie. Um, and you, basically, in computers the fact that it's not truly on or off is actually a curse whereas in music it not being on or off allows you to use them for uh, transistor rays and amplification and a valve for example is more about analog electronics so when i say when i put an input in here um it doesn't activate this immediately i want two buttons okay it doesn't activate this immediately so the two pons are i can't take the output of this bar and put, I can put it into the input of the, other, of the second bar, okay? <coughs> okay. So you should be able to see that on your screen now if you've got your little... Uh, yeah, okay. But I can't take the output of this one, this one on the right, and put it back into the input of the first one. It sort of does, undoes the electronics. So what I do is right. I feed them into these ores. These should be ores. Yeah. Yeah. And feed the output of those like that. Okay? Right. And in theory... Uh, I should now have, um, did I do that right? I guess I do my circuitry horribly wrong here. And this is where I went a bit horribly wrong on my other circuit because, oh, I know what I need to do. Um, Again, flip my logic back to positivity. Right. That's now turned off, okay? Okay. And now from a button press here, it turns on. Right. So I can take an instant button press and it turns on. I can press it here and it should turn off. Right. But if you notice it went to that weird disco flicky thing. Yeah. That's because of ticks. So the way this simulates is, it takes an input here, and at the end of each tick it basically goes, do I turn the output on or not? It's not a, what's the voltage, is the voltage over my threshold? And, and remember, transistor doesn't really ask that question in terms of logic, it basically happens because of physics. It's like it's like filling a bath, the bath isn't full or empty. When it gets to that lip, or if you have a bucket which is about to tip and you start putting water in, it doesn't decide... There's nothing programmatically going, oh, do I tip now or not? It just gets there and it does it. It's, it's physics. Sure. Whereas this is actually, in each time round, there's a little bit of code going, should I turn my output on or not? And it does it in sync with that tick. And we know ticks work because if you look at your... And I love this little charger thing, this little delay. Um, this is, compared to Minecraft, when you edit this, it tells you how many ticks there are. So we're looking in one second, 40 ticks per second is what they're aiming at. Yeah, but you can you can sort of um, get it in a state here because I had to put these buffers in because I can't put feedback onto itself and I guess that's to make people who don't know say about logic yeah better. It kind of sounds good. Now what I did the the day was when I was using this to charge. Okay, so I can put over here what this is by the way is this is called the set and this is the yeah. reset. Okay. Yeah. I can now take this charge unit here. Put this hat five seconds. Okay. Take the output of that and put it back into the first one. And the output from there, oh, the output from there into into that one. Okay. So now this button is pointless. In fact, what I'll do is to make it even clearer, I'm going to put that there, feed that in, and also take the output from there into there. Okay. So now when okay. I press it. Sorry, that's set a bit too fast. Set that to five seconds. That's now going to charge a little bit. It shouldn't really, but... 
and this is where it's broken. So I'm going to just delete that. Delete that. Put that back in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's now charging. But this flickeringness is caused by... Is that stable now? No. It's caused by ticks. It's caused by ticks. And that's where this... One, two, three, four... I love this little charging. And it goes out. Right? So if we now look at this invention over here, which I like to call... Um, have I... Wait, wait. I'm very, very sorry I don't have you in this, okay? Well, this is I, exactly I can... that set. They are, okay. I'm in. Hold on. I've got to turn off the, um... the crashingness of it. Right. So this is a one-second fire. And I wanted to do that exact thing. It's, got, it's, it's a bit of a crazy invention. And if you press one now, it will burn for one second and turn off. Okay. But when I restore it, it goes in this crazy mode. Okay. And that's one of the annoying things. Because I think what happens is it doesn't remember... When you save an invention, it remembers all the connections, but doesn't remember the state of any connections. Um, and we'll just say... Whoa! <laughs> ah! And... <laughs> and hopefully it's cut itself out and you'll be falling back to Earth. Um, yeah, although I, I have flown some considerable distance. Uh... <laughs> I literally have no idea where you are now. Um, hold on, I'll come straight back just as soon as I have put this on a vehicle mount and stolen a copy of it. Um, but that's that, all that is. That's the it. same logic we're looking at here. But what I can then do is I can compress it down because there's no reason these blocks have to be one block apart. I can literally slam them together. And what you see there is, this. again, I was trying to balance it a little bit. You have three and three plus a little um, charge cube and a button which I then tied into the bathtub. Yeah. I call that the, um, I haven't got a name for it, I was going to call, oh there you are, I was going to come up with a witty name for something to get rid of old boy, but I, um, I haven't really got a name for it yet. Okay, um, I'll bear that in mind for when you next mention it. Um, when, you, when, when you bring it out, the thing is, when you, when you bring it out of storage, what you have to do is, where's Rocket? Uh, let's go back, this one. Okay. Notice it's sort of firing. If you look at the, these lights, they're flickering on and off. Yeah. And it's, it's it, the state of it is broken. And I just have to break the diagonal, put the diagonal back in, and it's it's now stable again. And that stabilises it. Okay. And if you reload this world, if we all exit and came back in, this would be here, but it would be flickering like mad. So any complicated electronics like this just doesn't survive coming out safe. Now, the interesting thing was I was doing this to get the lights to come on. Okay? Yeah. I had really complicated lights. And I realised I don't need to. I could just have used a switch. But I'm with a gonna... switch, so let's do the same circuit again with a switch. What you can do here, I can put my charge cable in, and then I can use a single logic gate here, and my light, and I can use a Zor. Okay? So in this okay. case, and this is where the weirdness comes in, and I should show you what happens over there. Into there, that also goes into there, that goes there. So what happens is I press this button, this is going to charge for um, five seconds, and then it's going to activate. As all works by, if neither are on, then it's out. If one of them are on, either one are on, it, then that lights up, and if both are on, then it's out. It's one or the other, but never both, okay? Mm -hmm. So I turn it on, it's on until this thing charged and both inputs are on and the light goes out. Okay, so theory, it's exactly the same as this when this one's working, right? Yeah. Because that will charge and then the light goes out or flickers horrendously. Yeah. And the side effect of this is that actually when I come to turn it off, it does it again. Because now this is off but that's still on. So there's no instant discharge of the capacitor effectively. Okay. And when you see the lights, all the lights are here. It's the same circuit, but three times, because I've got uh, three reds and a green. You yeah. flick the switch, and it works as intended. Red, 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 green. Okay. But when I flick it off, there's a side effect. And I flick it off, and what happens is, 
Yep, it recharges. I just saw it. It jumps yeah. back up. Okay. And that's, that's, that appears in the videos every now and then. Did you reset the lights? You've got to wait. So it all depends on whether you need to do the complicated circuit because you need to have it work exactly right on and reset with no side effects. And okay, flickering like mad is yeah. a kind of bad side effect. But that works exactly right. And by the time that's discharged, it's, it's back together. Or... Okay can you live with the side effect and most of the time like with those lights we can live with the side effect cool there are some other ways of doing this by the way there are some very other cool ways of mechanically building uh, these circuits awesome while I've, I've got, got you, you here you can't build this this is ridiculous okay, basically well, while this I've got easy. you here and on circuits mm. something I missed from Minecraft something that I can't seem to find here is a circuit repeater you don't need one so you don't need two reasons. So that's what these are acting as here. So you don't need one because there's no distance drop-off. In Minecraft, they had this weird thing where the voltage level dropped for every unit went along. And that was helpful because you could put circuits, you could, you could have switches where you basically use an input to the side. You don't need yeah. it because these boxes act as repeaters. So if you need to repeat for some reason, you can just use an OR box with only one input. But you don't need one because if you're trying to make your circuits okay. look nice, yeah. um, then yes, you can use an ore box to, to chain so, things along. They might well slow down by one tick every time. Sure. So let, let's say we want to, because this works pretty well, but let's say you want to turn this into, I don't know, an indicator bulb. Right, okay, so what you could do there is you want to indicate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's give it that you would use, um, you could just literally put the output into there. Uh, let's go for a second. You want two chargers, mm -hmm. right? Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm just thinking it through in my head. The first way, and it's okay to build it twice, okay? Mm -hmm. What I would do is, um, yes, got it. Okay. The output from the first one, so when this first one's charged, bearing in mind it's the top with the top lit up, it's going to light up, okay? Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to power the second one, and we're going to use a not. No, we're not. We're going to use a. Um, I've got two ways of doing this, and you're not going to like the first one because it's a bit. Heavy. Something like uh, that. Yeah. Okay. Let me just um, set the values here to be uh, sensible. We want 500. I think it's half a second on, half a second off. Should be about right. I'm not sure about this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. So. Uh, so it's a NAND. That, that makes perfect you want sense. One more, you want one more, sir. You want one more thing where you want that to be an AND. Um, <laughs> the reason for that is... reason that is, you need that to go into the light, you need that wire into there as well, just so when you turn it off, um, it actually turns off no matter what the state of these lights are, because these, these stay powered on, okay? Yeah. So basically what you're doing is you're counting down half a second for it to be on, then once, it, that, once it's on, you count down half a second for it to be off. So this is kind of like two capacitors, you build this circuit normally with two capacitors and, and a switch, and when one's charging, then turns on and then you charge the other. So you can build timing circuits, very, very poor clocks, because getting two matched capacitors is quite hard and there's all kinds of problems with them interacting. But yeah, you could basically charge one, discharge it, charge one, discharge it, is, is, a, is a very cheap timing circuit. So these things are kind of like capacitors, but they're not. They don't, because, because once they're charged, they stay until that, it takes, it takes, a time from when you put the signal in before the charge 
but they're kind of like delays. They were like echo box delays almost at the same time. They're a bit weird, these things are. They're very, very cool, but they're not quite electronics. But that does it for you, yeah? That certainly answers my And question. you could do this Thank with you. a left and a right, by the way. If you want to have, to make this circuit nice, mm. okay, what I would do is I would take the output from that into there and into there, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I'd have another switch. Don't turn both at the same time. I would duplicate the wiring. Oh, without having to duplicate the number of timers. Indeed. And then just to get this right, I'm going to make that into an OR gate. Um, and wire that back up. So they both go into that OR gate. So it doesn't matter which one's pressed, it's still going to trigger that circuit. And then what you do is with that AND over there is put this one under that, that AND. Yeah. Okay. So basically, if the left one's on, you're going left. Mm -hmm. Right? If the right one's on, you're going right. You're going right. Okay. So if they're both on, then you're broken down. And they're in sync as well. Okay? So, so, but these, again, these could be sensors. You could tie those sensors into your gyroscope and have them triggered automatically. Yeah? That's oh, your circuit. Oh, wow. <laughs> you could tie them in. I'm by that. Hold on while I just print screen that. Because... I might need to copy this and integrate it into something else later. Um, no, it's going to be on the video. You have your own little tutorial video. <laughs> <laughs> Superb, thank you. Um, but they're not quite electronics. They're, they're a little... So you sit there going, oh, I know this electronics. And I don't know what the side effects of... There shouldn't be any side effects of this. As long as you have these values set. So I'd match them. Um, the left one is how long it's on for. So you might want to do something like 300. Uh, the right hand one down to maybe uh, 150. And now you should get something like something more a like a solenoid. More. Now you just need a little piece of electronics that goes clack, bonk, clack, bonk, clack. Well, <laughs> funny you should say that because actually you've got the um, um, the percussion head, haven't you? <laughs> uh, uh, and this is where your creativity will. If you wanted to, you could you could make it click off as well. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, no, I don't know I can do that. Actually, for some I'm, I'm gonna need a considerably bigger chassis to get all this in. Okay. Remember, no, remember, no, remember, you can compact this. It doesn't need to be split like this. It doesn't need to be in this line. As long as you've got the sequence right, just like that rocket, mm. you can slam it into into this many blocks. Yeah. It does sound like a, a, an indicator. <laughs> um. All right. That seems just a moment. So as I say, build it out. I always build it out something like this, so I can see the circuit I'm doing. Because once you start applying it to, you know, you're going to. You drop it in, like you've got a gap here. Anyway, sorry. You've I'm got looking. you've got like a gap here. You could build it into this gap. Yeah. And it's... then it's hidden away, and then just put your buttons on the outside. It actually, I think I showed you it a lot. Or I tried to, um, and this was the one you said you you had some some okay, concerns understand. about the wiring. Um, right. So what I didn't understand here was. You have a switch here. Yeah. What is this? This logic here, this OR logic, okay? Uh, yeah, it, it's lights on or off, and I'm, I'm literally just not... I was like, okay. page one of GCSE electronics. Um, what I didn't understand was, why you didn't just wire them into the switch? Yeah, you see what I mean? Page one, GCSE electronics. <laughs> and to be honest with you, to be honest with you, flip flop over here, half an hour, and I was like, why don't I just use a switch? <laughs> yeah, so so I, I essentially had two buttons. Um, one was a switch to put the lights on and off, and now I know how the indicators work. That's what the side lights are going to be. Um, 
because that was my yeah, original intention. Yeah, we could intention. strap that on somewhere. We could probably strap it under the underbody somewhere. Yeah, and then uh, a collision horn. But the, the main reason that I was so happy with this was I worked out how to get the turning circle down to yeah, it almost is very nice. nothing. By, by having the wheels turn in opposing directions, it will also, for the most part, climb up anywhere up to about 60 degree slopes that are uneven, quite cheerfully. No, um, I like it. I love it. Because of the suspension. Um, I love, do you know what else? I love your attention to detail. You, you bother with this, and I don't. And it, my, my invention is chauffeured. But like the, the, uh, the lights and the, and the little exhaust things. Oh, the, the exhaust was just an affectation, but the, the lights... No, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. The lights I did because I mostly just wanted to see if I could. Uh, yes. Because if I didn't take the plunge somewhere with the wiring, I'd forever be building stuff and then going, Moo, wire this for me. So I've, I've got to learn. Um, and this but was I my think first with this attempt. stuff, you don't need to learn too much. I mean, I always come and I'm like, boxing up. And then you tinker with it and evolve it. But yeah, no, I love yeah. it. I do love the, um, the tension. But it was just this. I was looking at it going, okay, you've got some logic. I thought, great, you've got some logic. Let's look at what logic you're doing. I'm like, it's a switch. It's a switch. It's like, it's like um... But I didn't know if you did... So the other way, the other reason to do this, I did that on mine over... I, put, I just deleted it, didn't I? I did it on mine because... Um, Originally, I didn't know how I wanted to trigger it, so I think I have one of these where I have it on a button, but I also have it on a uh, something else. So I was I wanted an OR button to allow me to press it both them underneath or when I'm in in the thing. I didn't want to wire everything up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just depends how complicated you want to make it. So this is a nice little. You know, this is a relatively simple vehicle. Yeah. You treat each circuit separately. If you, if you took your your, your, your four drive circuit. Mm. It's completely simple. You take your lights. It looks a mess because you've got three back lights. So you yeah. could make that nicer if you wanted to by putting a or in the middle of those lights. You could have a single wire coming out and then three wires coming out there. Now yeah. it wouldn't. It would actually be more complicated because you'd have an or block. We'd have less wires in the middle, but yeah. it wouldn't be any different. It just depends on how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with looking at this. This is the right way of making it look. It looks nice. No, the other thing that I was planning with this was to actually make the one in the middle white and then have a reversing light. But... <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, can you do that when you reverse that? Probably not. No, because that's, that's all dependent on the motion of the vehicle. But it, it argue that it happens when you put it in reverse gear and you just happen to click button three or whatever. Um, I, I'm, I'll get around to it, but... Now that I've got the pattern for building the indicators, that's my next plan, so... But don't build flip-flops. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that doesn't look like a good idea. It, they just they just don't work. They're not long-term stable. Let's look at this. This is nice. This looks nice as well. When, you, when it's, Anything which is symmetrical automatically is right. Oh, I don't um, is that impromptu how to? I'm not going to go into the how to build a drive skill because I'm not building it anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've just crashed my own vehicle. <laughs> it's been stable all that time. <laughs> and then as soon as you touched it, it's fallen over. Uh, yeah. You need to pick it up and put it down again. Ah! Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with like how much we've come on in um, four days of playing. Yeah, uh, con considering that this is only yeah, it is indeed only day four. We, we're doing incredibly well. Um, so it looks like the half track's back on hold, but now I know I can do more with this. I I know where I am going. So one of the things I was thinking about building was trying to build the most realistic car possible. And I think we could both interpret that differently, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 yeah. a case of I think we should go and build and see how that it all pans out. Now, now bear in mind that we both have children. I think my understanding of realistic car would be one that has you know chocolate mashed into the seats and everything. <laughs> Um, pretty much, pretty much. Um, 
I think you could build... One of the things I was playing with was how to build um, like a variable accelerator. Okay. And I came up with an idea and then realised the problem is you still... I'm, I, I don't know if it actually works with a controller. Does this game work with a controller? Um, that would be a good question. That, that you would have to test. Let me grab my controller. <laughs> I've got a suspicion it won't. Right, so I need one, two, three, four. feedback or oh, whatsoever um, because basically I realized that at the end of all this building you're still controlling it with a single button on your keyboard yeah and um, it just doesn't work you need you need you need to have something which has a variable input um, <coughs> so I, I've worked out to optically build so it's all a lag there <laughs> You know how I indicated it. Oh, do you want to see the other trick I found? Yeah, go ahead. Right, I'll do it on yours, okay? So you're trying to build here, yeah? Mm hmm And it's a bit annoying that lifts in the way. Yeah. Okay, so what you do is you grab this. Oh, uh, yeah, and it, it off-centers the, um, off the lift mechanism. And then you can get right underneath. Yeah. It's kind of like how you would lift an engine out. I think you put like a fake axle thing in, don't you, that you lift? Yeah. That's what I believe. Right. I'll take my lift away from you. <laughs> Just dropping your car on my head. I, I, or my car on my head, even. Um. Right. Um, I'm going to stop recording now. So, um, that's been a completely useless hints and tips video. From day four, uh, it has. Uh, it, from my point of view, it's been fascinating. Now I've just got to translate this into the underside of this, uh, overly lowering the center, uh, the, the the mass of the, the truck, because yes, it kind of relies on its problem. ground clearance. So anyway, the mass is on these small micro vehicles. Mass is like a couple of extra circuits is a massive amount of mass, really. So let's see how that goes. Okay. All right. So, so long from the both of us. Indeed. Uh, we'll be back with another challenge video soon. Bom, oh. bom, bum. God, oh. another trophy that I won't. Oh, Oops, see you soon. Pile.